Okay, let's get started with uh, lesson 3.3, rules for differentiation. It's a good lesson for a flip because it's just uh, all of our derivative rules. So let's start with this one. Uh, we've got the derivative of a constant function. We've already talked about this one in class a little bit. But um, the derivative of any constant is zero. So we know this because a constant is a horizontal line, has no slope, or has a slope of zero rather. So the derivative of 3 if f of x is 3 is just zero. So that was pretty straightforward. Um, our power rule, this is the one I showed you guys when we were doing uh, section 2.4. So basically, the derivative of any polynomial function, the power comes down in front and multiplies by the constant, and you reduce the power by 1. So if we take a look at this problem, um, if f of x equals 6x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus x minus a half, we take this one at a time. So um, the 4 right here is going to come down multiplied by the 6. So 6 times 4 is 24 x to the reduce the power by 1, and then minus 2 times 2 is 4, so minus 4x to the first power, and then plus 1, because the coefficient of the x here is 1, and the power is now 0, and the derivative of uh, negative 1 half is 0. So that's the power rule for integer powers. Then we have the constant multiple rule. So this rule applies when you have a, a function that's being multiplied by a constant. Like for example, f of x equals 3x squared plus 6x. You could factor a 3 out of this function and have x squared plus 2. And so what happens is uh, the constant is just going to come out of the, the function. And then you're going to differentiate the remaining piece. So then you do 3 times the derivative of the x squared plus 2, and we'll call this f of x. And so this is going to be the derivative is equal to 3 times the derivative of x squared is 2x and the derivative of 2 is 0, giving us a derivative of 6x. Right, so that's the constant multiple rule. Uh, it works whenever you have a constant that's inside of a function. You kind of just take it out and then you take the derivative of what remains. Um, sum and difference rule, it's a little hard to see with the polynomial like the one I have, but um, basically if you have you know, addition, subtraction signs, separating terms, you can actually take the derivative of each term individually, and uh, the resulting derivative is going to be the same. So really what this is saying is if you differentiate each piece, so like, let's do this one first. The derivative of 6x to the fourth with, res with respect to x is just 6 times 4 is 24x to the third power. Now let's go to the next term. The derivative of negative 2x to the second power with respect to x is just negative 4x to the first power. Now let's go to the x. The derivative of that with respect to x is, of course, 1, and then the constant goes away. So uh, sum and difference rule just says if you've got a couple of terms being added or subtracted, you can take the derivative of each one individually um, and then add and subtract the resulting derivatives, and it's the same thing as if we go back to this guy, uh, we did it with the power rule. So you get the same derivative. Product rule. Okay, so in this example, you've got two functions. They call the first one u and the first, uh, second one v. So basically, you're going to take the derivative in this order. So you're going to start with the function u times the second function's v's derivative, and then you're going to add the second function v times the first function u's derivative. So I kind of put it into words to make it a little bit easier. Um, what you do is you take the first function, you multiply by the derivative of the second, and then you add the second function times the derivative of the first. And since addition is commutative, you actually can flip-flop. It doesn't really matter the order. Uh, I like to memorize it this way. It just helps. Let's do a practice problem. So you've got uh, x cubed plus 2 times negative x minus 3. So what you do is you do the first function, which is the x cubed plus 2, and you multiply by the derivative of this guy, which is negative 1. And then you add the second function times the derivative of the first, which is 3x to the second power. So this is the derivative, and you can clean it up as, as nicely as you'd like. Sometimes they, you know, it kind of helps um, this uh, negative right here. Negative 1, so we'll just go like this. Um, and then this one over here, you can distribute the 3x squared if you want. This is a minus 3x to the third power, minus 9x squared. And combining like terms, you have negative 3x cubed and another negative 1, which is negative 4x cubed, minus 9x squared, minus 2. So that would be the derivative um, using the product rule. 
So this is really good when you have like binomials, kind of like this scene here. Um, it's just the first function times the derivative of the second, plus the second function times the derivative of the first. And make sure you always use parentheses, like um, right here with this negative one, to kind of remind yourself you have to distribute that negative one to those two terms there. Okay? Um, the next one is the quotient rule. So the quotient rule is another one where um, it's kind of like you just have the words here to help us along because it's always a consistent function, but here's what it says. It says, get my pen out, it says the derivative of the quotient, so u over v, is equal to, you've got the second function, or the bottom function, times the derivative of the top, minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom, all over the bottom function squared. Now, since subtraction is not commutative, you have to make sure you follow this order every single time. Um, so one more time, it's the bottom function times the derivative of the top, minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom, all over the bottom function squared. Okay, so let's, uh, let's have a go at this one. This is x cubed plus 2 over 4x. So you remember, you've got to follow this exactly. So you start with the bottom function, and again, use parentheses throughout, times the derivative of the top, using the power rule, that's just 3x squared, minus the top function, times the derivative of the bottom, which is just 4, all that's over the entire bottom function squared. Okay? So let's see if this cleans up nicely. 4 times 3 is 12. x to the third power minus 4 times x cubed minus 4 times 2z. All this is over uh, 16x to the second power. And then if you want to, it looks like there's GCF that we could factor out here. Um, so the top looks like there's a GCF of a 4 you could pull out. So 4, and then what's left is 3x cubed minus x cubed. And then you've got the minus 2 here. And then all this is over 4 times 4x squared. Uh, and then the 4s do cancel nicely, leaving us with 3x cubed minus x cubed, 2x cubed minus 2, all over 4x squared. And we can GCF again, just remove the 2, x cubed minus 1, over, and then this is 2 times 2x squared. And the 2s will cancel, leaving us with x cubed minus 1 over 2x squared. It looks like the numerator is the difference of cubes, but if we factor that out, I'm not sure we're going to get anywhere and simplify anything. So we'll go ahead and call that our final answer. So um, just to reiterate, the quotient rule you got the bottom function times derivative of the top, minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom, all over the bottom function squared. The last rule we're going to do is the power rule for negative integer powers of x. So this is exactly like the power rule that we did in the very beginning, only we're going to look at what happens when you have negative powers. So not much changes here. So if we look at the function 1 over x cubed, which I'm going to rewrite as x to the negative third power, we could just use the power rule on it. So you've got the power comes down, and you reduce it by 1. So if you reduce negative 3 by 1, it's actually going to be negative 4. And if we move that negative 4 to the bottom, it's actually negative 3 over x to the 4th. So by reducing our power, our derivative on the denominator actually increased by a power, just because if we think about a negative number. Um, those are basically your rules. So uh, your... 3, 3, rules for differentiation. And now if you go on x2, you'll notice I put a Google form on there with just a few practice questions I want you guys to try. All right, good luck.